Great choice. You and I were sitting here uh, last night and we had this conversation about executive privilege. I want to play you back some of what we said. I don't think you have to be clairvoyant to know that Trump's team will likely claim executive privilege and some type of effort to block this. I wonder if you think we hear that from them and if you also think we hear it from Pence's team. So if you want the lotto numbers, I can't guess them with the same certainty that I provided you that information last night. And yet here we are. Exactly. And predictably, here we are, because there is no enthusiasm from Mike Pence for testifying. He could have done it, frankly, when the president was under impeachment following January 6th. He could have come forward during the January 6th committee hearings. There's nothing that prevented that. And, and to be clear, executive privilege is meant to protect conversations that go on between the president and his close advisors that have to do with governing. These conversations that prosecutors now seek are the opposite of governing. These are conversations about possibly criminal activity. Here's something I want you to tease out for us, which is you have Pence's book where he details a lot of these conversations he had with the president. Why is that not good enough? Well, here's the problem. Pence's book that's the questions Pence wanted to answer. As a prosecutor, I have a lot of other ones. All right, Hugo, I want to ask you, the special counsel also subpoenaed former Trump national security advisor Robert O'Brien. I wonder what this signals to you about the insurrection investigation. Yeah, I mean, it's been kind of quiet for a long time, right? Because we saw the flurry of subpoenas to people involved in the fake elector scheme for a long time. And then we didn't hear anything through the holidays. And then now we're hearing about people like um, uh, O'Brien getting subpoenaed to testify before the grand jury. And I think that's really significant. You know, um, it's not exactly clear if he was testifying to the January 6th portion of the special counsel's investigation or the Mar-a-Lago documents part of the special counsel's investigation. But I think it reflects an in increased aggression and an increased kind of determination from the special counsel's office to bring these Trump officials in. You've got O'Brien, and then now, you, of course, you've got Pence. Uh, and I think it's a, a reflection that this investigation is moving faster than people uh, might have otherwise anticipated. Do you agree with that? You know, I do agree with that. The investigation, we're clearly seeing signs now that it's moving quickly. You'll remember that during the first year of the Biden presidency, we have a brand new attorney general in office, there were no signs of investigation ongoing. We understand now the signs we would have seen if DOJ had been aggressively pursuing January 6th. We would have seen people fighting back when they were subpoenaed, or at least leaking the fact that they had received a grand jury subpoena. Now we're seeing a fast press. I'm, I'm not sure, frankly, Alicia, if that means that we're close to the end. I do think it means that DOJ is in a period of intense um, ac activity mm -hmm. where they are assessing the evidence and determining whether they have charges to bring.